Welcome back to the Let's Talk Racing YouTube channel in association with Racing TV. We've had two days of action at Cheltenham to reflect on as well as some good action this weekend. I'm just about recovered from the last few days, Andrew. How are you feeling? Yeah, I'm feeling very good. I'm like yourself. Uh, we, we had a good night out in Leamington on Friday night, which has taken me the guts of a week to recover from. But uh, <laughs> other than that, I'm in fit and firing form. And I must say, not only the Cheltenham cards last weekend, but even the Chepstow cards this week have been very informed of some very interesting novice hurdlers, especially on show. And it's at that time of the year where you get an awful lot of good young horses becoming coming out and, and running for the first time over hurdles. And it's a very interesting time as a result. What we're going to do on this episode is we're going to round up a couple of updates for uh, big horses missing the season unfortunately as well as reflect on Cheltenham. I think there were some interesting races that we should touch on moving forward through the season and then preview uh, three races at Weatherby on Saturday as well as the London Gold Cup at Ascot on Saturday and then our best bets at the end we do hope you enjoy if you do enjoy the video please hit that like button subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and last week we also did um, a private members only live stream looking at the Cheltenham cards we're really looking forward to doing one for the Cheltenham November meeting in a couple of weeks time so if you're not yet subscribed to LTR plus you can do that by clicking join down below we hope you enjoy so I'm going to quickly round through a couple of updates, uh, horses missing the season. Fortunately, last year's Albert Bartlett winner, the nice guy, is out for the season through injury. Redemption Day also joins him on the sidelines for the season. I know that those people that would have backed him in the Supreme Novice Hurdle anti-post would be absolutely gutted. Obviously finished second at Punchestown last year. A French seal, a bit of an anomaly, has been retired. James's Gate is at a setback, third in the champion bumper. I had a setback, might not miss the full season, but uh, will definitely miss the first part. And Quilixios is also out for the season for Henry de Bromhead. And, and another interesting point with Henry de Bromhead, Barry the Butcher, an exciting, very exciting young horse that goes into his yard, uh, bought by Sean and Bernardine Moore Ryan, um, is actually going to stick to bumpers this year, which isn't something that Henry often does. So that could be of interest. And then one thing I want to get your opinion on, Andrew, high definition. He was anti-post favourite, I believe, for the 2021 Epsom Derby. Rated 117 on the flat, has been bought for 350,000 guineas, has been sent to Joseph O'Brien to go hurdling. Very, very exciting. Do you think if he takes the hurdles, he could be like he could be really, really good? He could be, yeah. You know, he's got an awful lot of class about him. He was running in Group 1s the, the entirety of this year. And I must confess, there's an awful lot of satisfaction I get from almost how irritated some of the flat fans are that this horse has been bought to go hurdling but look he, he was a very good flat horse we saw it with Sir Eric who was a 100 rated plus horse took to hurdling like a duck to water a couple of years ago for Joseph so if he does that he'd have to have a chance just given his demeanour and given the way he was over the flat I wouldn't be certainly piling in to, to be backing him particularly for any great race but uh, it would be very interesting to see how it goes fascinating new recruits who hurdling from the flat but let's talk about Cheltenham then because I, I must admit as much as I love Cheltenham I found those two days really really tricky I mean if you'd given me three or four horses in most races other than the three mile novice chase I'd have probably struggled um, I wouldn't have picked many winners at all it was really tough uh, some of the highlights on the card um, I was disappointed by, by Music Drive and the two and a half mile novice hurdle on the first day just seems to be so slow. Do you think he could develop maybe into a Manila crooner down the line? Yeah, maybe so. He needs three miles. He probably needs a bit softer ground as well than what he saw at Cheltenham. But at the same stage, I just thought he was going to be much better than what he was facing. Now, Mo Fassa did it quite well, especially to, given he didn't jump very well. But I thought he'd be able to put away the wounded knee and he was unable to do so. We are going to have to touch on Wrexham. John McConnell had three winners. Uh, you only backed one of them. It was a bit of a, a strange two days. Uh, but Wrexham, obviously, you put him up for the Albert Bartlett on the anti-post series, the first selection of yours. How did you assess the weekend? It couldn't really have gone much worse. Yeah, no, it was a terrible performance from Wrexham and I hold my hands up and apologies to anyone that obviously has gone and, and backed this horse. Um, he looked to have a, a, a progressive profile going into last Saturday. Just didn't seem to happen for him. He was perhaps a shade keen, but 
you know, he's, he's stopped like a, a, you know, like the lights have just gone off at the top of the hill. I watched the race back the other day and, you know, he was beaten halfway down the back. So it's not his, his, his proper running. I wouldn't suggest that. I don't think he's become a donkey overnight, but at the same stage, he's winning now, Albert Bartlett. So going to have to dust myself off. I know we've got a Cheltenham anti-post video quickly coming around and I'm going to have to get Next myself week. a... Next week in, in the bag and I'm going to have to get myself a good horse to to maybe start and steady the ship. You know, a little bit like Man United buying in Casemiro. You just need somebody to be in there that's going to be in the team every day and is going to do the job for you every day. Looking back on, on the best bets last week, uh, mine were, were terrible, to be honest. Um, only Castel Gandolfo placed out of all of them. Uh, Clara Rose was really disappointing at Aintree. Um, and I put two up in, in the three-mile handicap chase at, at, at Cheltenham on, on Saturday. Uh, both were beaten, Motown Maggie and Corsa Wren. And the one that beat them was Lord Accord, who I had in my best bets for the Cheltenham, for the Chepstow video, sorry. And he didn't run, ran here instead and won at a double figure price. So that was that was gutting. Uh, Pied Piper for me was performance of the meeting. I thought he did it really well in the holdings hurdle. Jack Kennedy had barely moved um, until he jumped the last and, and away he went. Plenty more in the tank. It looks like the WKD is, is going to be his next target and then maybe if, if, if he runs well there goes to the Christmas hurdle at Kempton. That type of race would definitely suit him. What did you make of Pied Piper and, and Knight Salute's going to go, he's going to go to the elite hurdle and then maybe off to Paris. Do you, do you think Pied Piper is the only one we can really take out of that race? I love Knight Salute ran a very game race and he's the type of horse that keeps just putting his head down and he might be able to pick up a small field prize at some stage, you know, in one of these grade two, grade three contests. Uh, that being said, Pi Piper brushed him aside very nicely indeed, and and did it quite and did it well. You know he's now going to have to back up pretty quickly. The WKD is only next Friday, so it's only a two two and a half week turnaround. But you'd have to think he's not going to face too much in that race. And then if he's won a Grade Three, or sorry, the the Holdings Hurdle was only a conditions race, he's going to win a Grade Two in the WKD. He's going to have to go and and test himself out in Grade One Open Company. I believe he'll come up a little bit short. That being said, it was nice to see a horse of that ability, I suppose, run to that level so early in the season. Gives you such a, a boost for what's still to come that, you know, Pied Piper's out in the middle of October. And great to see you at the October meeting being well-backed by Irish trainers. Too well-backed, in, in my opinion. They absolutely dominated. It was quite embarrassing, actually. We can't win in March and we can't even win in October now. Um, looking at the... Uh, the attempt, it was won by another Irish horse, uh, won by Shoot First for uh, Charles Burns. Um, th the four horses that qualified for the final were Shoot First, Botox has On Tolure, and Salvador Ziggy for Gordon Elliott, first four to do so. Shoot First was well backed. I think he was 8-1 to one the night before. He was backed into 2-1 to one favoritism, and he won. He looks like he might have more up his sleeve as well. Do you think he could genuinely threaten... Um, the final if he went up to those mid-130s. Yeah, maybe so. He, he tanked through the race. Philip Burns, I think, got there maybe even a shade too soon for his own liking. It just goes to show when Charles Burns and his team have the money down, it, it rarely goes astray. And if this horse is campaigned with the pertemps in mind, which I assume he will be, I think he had to win the other day to make sure he got into the race. I could see him running a huge race um, come the final. I must confess, I'm a big fan of, uh, I can't pronounce his name particularly, but this on tire for J the John Joe O'Neill team and obviously John Joe Jr. riding him. I just think a really fast run, big field, three mile handicap is going to suit this horse. He stays all day. He's a good jumper. And he got outpaced turning in and really stayed on very well. So he's one to keep on side. Not saying he's going to win a pretemps or anything, but... You know, the fixed brush hurdle at Haydock, something like that, a real staying three-mile handicap. I think he's certainly got one of those in the tank this season. Yeah, I think he's the type of horse that he was, if he was with Gordon Elliott, he'd almost be campaigned very cleverly to, to arrive in March in absolute tip-top condition, maybe a few pounds less than he's at currently. Chemical Energy won the three-mile, three-runner novice chase. He's now 12-1 to 1 for the National Hunt Chase, won't be seen until then. That's surely ridiculously short. Like, Marla Mission didn't run to form. Life in the Park literally walked over the line. I know Chemical Energy did it well. He won by 61 lengths. You, you've got to look and, 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 and uh, acknowledge how impressive he was on the day. But did the other two perform at all? No, not at all. And uh, it's very rare. I know I sometimes come out with big big statements, but I physically could have ran past Life in the Park up the run, and it was actually a little <laughs> bit sad to see him being... Because like, Darryl O'Keefe was trying his best to get this horse to complete. He just didn't want to do it. 
and he went out like a light. He ran like Wrexham did. And suddenly just, you're going from thinking this is all going great for two miles, two and a half miles to my lord, what's happened to here? Maller mission. Well, I don't know what happened to him really. He was equally bad. And look, Chemical Energy, he's one of two mile one beginners around the stole, I believe it was. And then he's one of three mile kind of no-show novice chase around Cheltenham. I wouldn't be backing him for the festival in a fit in any race at any price, to be honest. No, I completely agree. And Canto Bruno was a winner that you had. Uh, you put him up in the horses to follow as well. Even sweeter, John McConnell, bumper horse. You got very, very excited. In fact, I'm going to insert the video right here. <laughs> He's the famous Encanto Bruno. He stays on up to straight, makes McConnell look great. He's the famous Encanto Bruno. You got awfully excited there. Yeah, well, it was a little bit of weight off the shoulders, Josh. It had been a bruising couple of days from a punting perspective. Wrexham was completely in the mud earlier in the afternoon, and I just needed something to throw me a bone. And uh, look, he, he won very well. Substance of the form, we won't have, we won't know until later on in the season. He's a young horse. I think John McConnell said that he's going to come back and, and, and have a roll at the dice at the Cheltenham bumper. As much as he's probably going to come up short in that, he's probably well entitled to do so. He's won his two bumpers. I don't know whether he'd run maybe in the grade two at the Dublin Racing Festival after a break, but he's four going five. He's entitled to come back for the champion bumper and see where he is. But he, he's definitely a graded horse. I'm not, I'm not saying he's a grade one horse and I'm not putting him up next week for the champion bumper before people get it their arms in a twist but at the same stage he is a good horse and he'll win graded races in time we've got bruno fernandez bruno gamarish and now we've got encanto bruno 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 so there we have it uh, the, the breakdown of the two-day uh, showcase meeting at cheltenham let's now focus on the week that's coming up the highlight meeting of the week is weatherby uh, we've got three races that we're going to preview there and the first one's going to be the two miles listed mare's hurdle where Molly's Ollie's Wishes is two to one favourite. Look, she, she won the race last year. You've also got Mar Martello Sky, who's got an incredible record fresh. I don't think actually she's, she's been beaten fresh, but she is dropping down in trip for the first time in over 12 months. Is this a, is this a tricky one, or, or is there others in the field that are of interest? Yeah, I think it's a really trappy little race, Josh. Uh, I think it's between the top three in the market. I know Lady Adair has an awful lot to find on, on raw figures, but at the same stage, she's an unbeaten horse going into this race and was progressive last year for Harry Fry. And I must say, Harry Fry's got a good knack at the moment with these mares keeping on, getting them to win races, and... I know you mentioned in an episode only a couple of weeks ago that he's got a great ability to, to rack it up ones and ones and ones against certain horses and get them improving and improving. So she's not one to take lightly at three to one. But I don't know. It was a hard race. I had it between maybe her and Molly's Ollie's wishes. I'd probably take on Martello Sky despite that. Uh, and I might... If you were to press me completely for a selection, I'd go maybe with the unexposed Lady Adair and maybe take a chance against the two older, more proven mares. If you press me for a selection, I'd say just have a look at a different race. Couldn't be backing <laughs> any horse in here. So tricky. But all three of them are of a similar level of ability. Like you say, Lady Adair could be anything. No, not couldn't be anything, but as in could be of the same level as Molly Ollie's Wishes and Martello Sky, but her price isn't juicy enough. We'll move on then to the, the three mile grade two West Yorkshire hurdle. Another tricky race, punting wise. The favourite sporting John, seven to four. My word, uh, awfully short, especially since we've not seen him since Warwick in January. Yeah, exactly. We've taken an awful lot on trust uh, in, in that regard. Look, he, he put in sort of two very good performances last year. He won a handicap around Cheltenham off top weight and won a pretend qualifier off top weight. But he's running in a grade two here. I don't know, Josh. I found it's a really uninspiring race from a punting perspective. They're all of relatively similar ability. I wouldn't be surprised if any of the top four or five in the market won the race. Um, Indefatigable's got a great chance, I think, of, of repeating her win in the race from last year. Thomas Darby, if he's on a going day, has a great chance. I think Prashima will always 
perhaps find one or two too good. I see in some betting that Thomas Darby's a bigger price than Prashima. I just can't have that whatsoever. Uh, but it, it's, a, it's a hard one. Yeah, if, if you know Thomas Darby's going to be absolutely A1, he's definitely should be a shorter price than he is. But then because he won the long distance on his next start last year, you might have that in your back of your mind. Yeah, maybe so. And Prashima's obviously had the run where uh, he was kind of tenderly handled after his chance was gone and the silver trophy off a big weight. So maybe they were thinking of, of this race and, and maybe he's the race fit option. I know Indefatigable's had a few runs on the flat where she's been outpaced, but three miles over hurdle seems to suit. She was running a big race in the mare's hurdle when she came down and obviously brought down our two hopes in the process as well. But maybe her but geez it wouldn't be a strong selection in the slightest and i won't be having any money on it no neither will i and i definitely couldn't be backing three under through five this is purely going to be a pipe opener for him for the coral trophy how he's five to one eleven to two is beyond me there's always one horse in this race that's coming back for a pipe opener before going over fences and is always criminally underpriced i cannot understand it like i remember that the tizard horse ran in this race a few years ago copperhead it was the slowest old handicap chaser you'd ever find. I think he went off four to one in this race. Like, who is backing these horses at four to one? I said it to you last week when we were watching Cool Cody. He went off nine to two. Who is backing Cool Cody at nine to two in the handicap early? I know. I think it's those punters that see Cool Cody out. They backed him at Cheltenham before, and it just said we got to go again. Fair enough, but uh, it's more heart than head. The big race of the weekend is the three-mile grade two Charlie Hall chase, and this is actually a, a really good race. Uh, Brave Man's Game, five to four favourites. A hoist in your five to two. Was slightly unsure whether they should be maybe switched around. El Dorado Allen in there as well. Obviously, he won the Denman chase, but, but I think the talking point's going to be the first two in the market. Obviously, Brave Man's Game beat a Hoist in Yore in the Corto Star at Kempton. A Hoist in Yore firmly beat Brave Man's Game at Aintree. Maybe Brave, Man, Brave Man's Game wasn't right. Maybe a Hoist in Yore wasn't right at Kempton. Plenty of talking points. But here, if we're looking at conditions, whether be left-handed flat track, is it not more of an Aintree than it is a Kempton? You'd have to think so. I think this is a home fixture for a Hoist in Yore, really. It's up north as well. Uh, it's been a race they've targeted for a long time. Uh, I don't know. I wouldn't say this has been an afterthought, but I'm just not sure with Brave Man's game. I, I got no impression when we went to see Paul Nichols that the Charlie Hall was anywhere near his mind. It was all about the Ascot two and a half race. And I don't know whether it's just been a kind of an epiphany moment that let's go and, and maybe try to prove ourselves over that distance. I'm not so sure, but it just doesn't seem quite right. I just don't see why they're almost running in the race. I think the only reason why I can think of is Paul will be looking at Hoyt and you're saying, oh, we, we beat him last year in the Corso Star, no problem. But it gives Paul a longer gap between here and the King George compared to the Ascot race in the King George. Maybe that's it. But like, it's, it's a few weeks. It could come into it. We know Brave Man's Game is going to be trained around that one race. I, I must admit, I'm Brave Man's Game's biggest fan. But when I saw those prices, I think Hoyt and you're at five to two left-handed I, I thought that was a really really good price and i'd actually have them the other way around at the betting maybe not brave man's game as big as as five to two maybe both of them shorter but i thought a hoist in your five to two that's pretty decent yeah no i agree with you there now there's some there's gonna be some viewers that are gonna to have to readjust their headsets because the amount of times that you told me last year the brave man's game was this that and other better than a hoist in your and now you're changing your tune completely. Well, no, 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 no. We're looking at specific races under specific conditions. If, it, oh, okay. if this was at Kempton, I'd be backing Brave Man's game 100%. If it was at Cheltenham, you'd have a different view. I don't think there's an awful lot splitting these two horses on raw ability. The, the, the track and the race type massively plays out to who should be favourite for the race. And yeah, Brave Man's game, I think, is the only horse really in training Maybe not in training, but the only horse that's going to be running in a King George that could give him a race, Alaho, if he was to run, which I think yeah. he will. I'm not sure a hoist in would give Alaho a race in the King George. I think Brave Man's game is going to be tuned perfectly for that. Eldorado Allen, are we, are we overlooking him? 
Yeah, I suppose he, he gave gave some great days for the Tizards last year. Joe Tizard seems to be in decent nick at the moment. His horses are running well. Never been a horse that's really done it for me, I must confess. And the only thing I'm t I'm hoping for tomorrow morning now is that we get a whole deluge. The entries get completely compressed down. But Sam Brown stays in the race for our competition from a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it was a pie-in-the-sky pick for this race. Look, he's the type of horse that may run into a place. On bare form, he's got an awful lot to find with the top two, who are proper grade one horses. He's no more than maybe a grade three horse. But fingers crossed, he gets declared and maybe runs a decent race behind them. I completely forgot about the competition. What am I on about? Come on, a hoist and door. <laughs> um, let's move over to Ascot on Saturday. And the one race we're going to preview is the three mile London Gold Cup Handicap Chase. Some of these will definitely have one eye on the Coral Gold Cup. Plenty of them entered in that. I quite liked one in here, and that was Ansem for Evan Williams. He, he won well off five pounds less on similar ground in December. He's 10 to one. I could definitely take those at the top of the market on. I'm not 100% convinced about the Alan King horse. Yeah, no, I'd agree with you. He was on my short list. I, I have no look back in Evan Williams' horses, so I won't row in with you on that one because the horse will have no chance. Uh, I just thought, I was struggling to think whether this was going to be a pipe opener, uh, you know, before new brief for this horse. But I came down on T Clipper and I was, and all, I was against him at Chepstow and I was against him with Peregrine Run and just about got that right. Uh, but he ran an awfully good race. He hasn't been chained from a handicap perspective after that. And he's got a big race in him. There's no doubt about that. I'd be very disappointed if by the end of this year he hasn't collected one of these big handicaps. And I just think if he's ready to go, if he's ready to put in a performance very similar to what he did at Chepstow, I think there'll be a it'll be a good horse to stop him. He's eight to one. I think you can already get four places each way. Uh, I'd be similar enough with you. I'd try to take on one or two of those at the top of the market when I came down on T-Clipper. The one that I would give a small mention to would be up the straight. Um, he'd be interesting if he did stay three miles. It's his first time going for it. 20 to 1. I'm not sure I'll be having too much on because I, I wouldn't be 100%. I can trust he will stay three miles. But there we go. That's our... Uh, preview for the four main races this weekend best bets wise have you got any yeah i've got three over in ireland and then i've got one horse that i couldn't pin down to a certain race but he's got three entries i think over the weekend in england to maybe keep the right side of one is running today as you're watching this video if you're watching it on the thursday it's in clonmel at 145 a mare called saint donna i actually backed her uh, on her seasonal reappearance at fairy house a couple of weeks ago ran like she desperately needed the run for tom cooper and brian cooper I think she'll be second or third favourite in there. I think she's got a very good chance. And then two at Galway on Sunday. Cool Survivor in the two mile four novice hurdle at 2.55. I think he's got a cracking chance. Uh, he might be favourite, but he won very well at Punchestown on hurdling debut. And in the 4.05 race at Galway on Sunday, a two mile handicap hurdle. A horse called Brookie is a very well handicapped horse. Not sure he wants it really soft. So if it's really soft, he may be a non-runner. Uh, but he ran a very eye-catching race last day at Tipperary when storming home for fourth under a very quiet ride from Peter Carberry. And the one horse just to keep the right side of in England, he's got an entry in the three-mile handicap chase at Weatherby on the Saturday. He's in at Carlisle on the Sunday in the Cumberland chase. Uh, he's Getapan Calange for Charlie Longston, a horse that Will Kennedy's ridden a few times last year. He's off 120. I think he's probably a 130s horse still. He's a very young horse still maturing, fell on his last start last season, wouldn't look too much into that. I think he's a well-handicapped horse. Plenty of selections over in Ireland for ABW. I've got two at a push. I like Ansem at 10-1 to 1 each way in the London Gold Cup. I'm going to put him up. And then any harm in asking, 4-1 for the two-mile handicap hurdle uh, at 2.05 at Ascot on Saturday. I think he's better than 137. Look, he remains the only horse that's ever lined up against Constitution Hill, albeit in a three-mile point-to-point, and beaten him. I think that, that says enough. He had three quiet runs over hurdles for his first three starts with John Joe. He then went on a winning spree. He's definitely got more in the tank. They might see this race as, as, a, as a pipe opener for the Greatwood Hurdle, if that's his target. They won this race last year, um, and I think any harm in asking at four to one could be a decent bet on Saturday at Ascot. But there's so many races over the weekend that you should be watching. Plenty on racing TV as well, because a lot of them are over in Ireland. Very informative maiden hurdles, especially at Galway and Wexford. Top, top, top horses in there. The likes of Sandor Clagan, some horses that you like. 
Yeah, Paul's got an awful lot of entries this weekend. Good on him. Uh, it's obviously been a very quiet summer. They've had a few issues in the yard, I believe. Uh, but you know, Xander Clegane and, and Joy Machan are both in uh, a maiden hurdle at, at Galway and at, at Wexford. I think imagine for Gordon Elliott's in Wexford twice. He's in there in the, on Sunday uh, in the 2-4 and on Monday in the 2 miles. I'm heading down on Bank Holiday Monday to Wexford with Dad. So anyone that is down there, make sure to come on and say hello. It's a good list to chase on offer as well I think Frontal Assault or Run Wild Fred will run in that so uh, plenty of good action over the weekend probably an awful lot of these horses won't ever be betting propositions on hurdling David they'll be short enough but at the same stage it's, it's kind of notebook and pen territory like it's been with Chepstow this week with those novice hurdlers and fingers crossed we see some good horses over the weekend that we can review and then preview our first grade one action of the season next weekend. Gavin Cromwell runs his exciting two-mile novice hurdler this year, as well as uh, It's What Unites Us runs for Gordon Elliott. Plenty of entries everywhere. If Grey Dawning runs at Warwick on Tuesday, I'll be making the trip. I know Lookaway's in the, in the two-and-a-half-mile uh, novice hurdle there as well. That could be some race. And Mon Morel's entered on the card. I think he's already jocked up for Harry Cobden. So that could be interesting could be a pretty good card at warwick i think i'll be heading down there but if you did enjoy the video please hit that like button uh, plenty of support on the last uh, on last week's video i think over 450 likes which is absolutely incredible if we could beat that this week that would be brilliant um, although the racing's not quite up to uh, to the cheltenham standards well any race they could run a six six uh, class six sell around cheltenham i'd be excited that's just how it goes uh, but please do enjoy your weekend and we'll see you soon